This is the first of two videos where I'm going to talk about absolute value. Now, in this video, I want to cover operations, you know, how it works, all that stuff, and some of the tricky conceptual questions they like to ask. We're actually going to do two of those. So let's talk about the operations first. We kind of treat absolute value just like we would parentheses. And let's just make up an example here. So just like parentheses, we're going to resolve the inside as much as we can first. Now it's easy to forget that because we spend so much time dealing with algebra and parentheses that can't really be simplified anymore. But we can obviously do this operation, 3 minus 6 is negative 3, right? And then we still have our absolute value bars. Okay. To get rid of the absolute value bars, we make it positive, right? So negative 3 becomes 3 times 2 plus 4. And we just follow the order of operations. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 4 is 10. Remember, what absolute value does is it just turns everything positive. When we talk about absolute value, what we're really talking about is the distance from zero, a number is on the number line. If this is zero on our number line, and this is two and negative two, they both have a distance of two from zero. They both have an absolute value of two. All absolute value is, is it flips all negatives positive. Leave zero, zero. Now, Distance is never negative. Just remember that. Okay. The operations question, like you just saw, can be an ACT question. In fact, it's not terribly uncommon. It's one of those things that it's so deceptively easy that it trips you up. And frankly, it's because of the order of operations. So be comfortable with it. Remember, resolve what's inside the absolute value bars first. Take the absolute value and deal with everything else. Okay. Let's talk about the conceptual stuff. This is where it gets tricky. Now, these questions are great for strategy. Let's look at this one. Which statement is equal to absolute value of x? You'll notice that question is about relationships. They're asking what statement, not what quantity, right? Absolute value of x. The answer choices are expressions. x squared, x squared minus x, so on and so forth. Okay. So, the way to do this is to pick numbers and then mark off. With absolute value, it's often best to pick one positive and one negative number just to see how they interface. So pick easy numbers. I'm going to pick uh, one. No, I'm going to pick two and negative two. One's not always the best for absolute value. But just play around with it. Remember, if you don't mark all your answers off with the numbers you picked, then just pick different numbers. That's the beauty of the strategy. When can you use it? Question is about relationships. Answers are about relationships. For more on that, please check out the strategy section of the book because this and marking off are really critical strategies. All right, so I'm going to use 2 and negative 2. So let's look at A. Now, absolute value of 2 and negative 2 is both 2, right? So I'm going to look for answer choices that spit out 2 for both 2 and negative 2. Well, A's out because with both 2 and negative 2, it's 4, right? So that's not, that's not going to work. B, well, 2 squared is 4 minus 2. That works for that, but it doesn't work for negative 2 because two, negative 2 squared minus negative 2, well, that's 4 plus 2. That's 6. And by the way, that would only work on 2. That wouldn't work for any other number just because it wouldn't, right? It's, I mean, once, once your numbers get bigger, the square is going to get bigger than the difference. So that one's out. Whoop. Now let's look at C. Square root of 2x. Well, this is another one that's tailored to the 2. So uh, if I have 2 times 2, right? Well, that's 4. Square root that. That's 2. That works for positive 2. but with negative 2, it doesn't because then I have square root of negative 4. That would actually be 2i. Check out complex numbers for more on that. And that's not even a real number. So that's out. D. 
Square root of x squared. Okay. Square root of x squared. So we got two and negative two. So, so two squared square root. Okay. So let's take a look. Oh, I think that four squared of four is two. Okay. So negative two squared square root. Oh, that'd be four squared of that is two. Okay. That works. That's equal to the absolute value of both. That's going to be correct. Now, square roots and squares cancel each other out. If you're not too comfortable with that, check out exponents because that's really, really a, an important concept. In fact, that's kind of how things like the Pythagorean theorem work, right? That's how we make things positive. So that one works. That's a classic definition question. And of course, if we look at E, E doesn't really make any sense. That's just going to be like the, the negative of all the absolute values. It doesn't really work. Okay, let's look at our second question if I can get it pulled up here. Magic. All right, if absolute x is equal to absolute y, absolute value of x is equal to the absolute value of y. What must be true? This is a beautiful question, not just because I wrote it. This is a really good question because it has some limiting factors to it. I mean, when you pick numbers, there's not that much there's not a ton of wiggle room, so you can pick a couple nice sets and then go on about your day. So the question's about a relationship, the relationship between absolute value of x and absolute value of y, and the answer choices are in terms of relationships or equations, except for c. Now, this is a must-be-true question. Now, with a logical operator like that, I'm going to try to prove the opposite. So, must be turns into could be. True turns into false. So what I'm going to try to do is prove that, that, that these answer choices can be wrong or can be false. They don't have to be false all the time. Just as long as they're false once, that's enough for them to not must be true. Must be true means always true. X equals Y. Well, let's get started before, for that, uh, first by picking some numbers. We can say that X is 2 and y is negative 2. And we, can sh we should pick a different set where they're the same sign and see how that works. We could say x is 2 and uh, y is 2. Now there's no rule that says that they, they can't. There's no rule that says they can't be the same number. That's a kind of a really tricky concept. You'll see that on the GMAT a lot. All right. So x and y, same absolute value. So x is equal to y. Sure, that can be true, right? But it doesn't have to be. 2 is not equal to negative 2. So A is out. B, x is equal to negative y. Well, that's, that's true here, but it's not true here. We don't know that uh, x and y are different. We don't know that they're different numbers. It's a really tricky answer choice right there. x and y are positive. Well, in this, in this case, they're not, right? Switch to black. Uh, x squared equals y squared. All right, well, that works, right? 2 squared is 4, negative 2 squared is 4, 4 and 4. Okay, well, I, I can't think of a way that I can prove that false. If I make these both 0, that works. If this is 1 and negative 1, it still works. So, I, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that's going to be the case. But again, it's really hard to prove something that always has to be true. So I want to kind of want to make sure on this by, by looking at E and making sure that there's a case where it doesn't have to be true. X plus Y equals zero. Well, that, that works here, but it doesn't work here. So you see how much easier it is just to try to prove things false. And when you think you've got a right one, don't get hung up on it. Don't spend a minute trying to figure out if there's a way you can make it wrong as long as you can make everything else wrong. Usually the one that's right doesn't stand out as much as the ones that are wrong. The ones that are wrong, after you get the knack of it, are fairly obviously wrong. Once you get into the flow of the question, it's pretty easy to pick them apart. For the most, time, for the most part. Not always. And focus on that. Don't focus on testing 20 cases out 
to try to prove something must be true. Focus on the obverse. Focus on what could be false. So check out the video on absolute value equations and inequalities. Fairly important. A little bit more than half of the questions in absolute value are absolute value inequalities. And sometimes that requires knowledge of the equations as well. So check that out. And in that video, we're going to talk about the number line and solution sets, which is something that we haven't touched on in inequalities before either.